Welcome to Inside the Scoop. My name is Amir. I'm joined by the one and only Chef Nick. And today we're here with uh, HF New Jersey's past president and director of food and nutrition at Valley Hospital, Don Cascio, and her executive chef, John Graziano. How are you doing, guys? Great. Very good. Uh, pretty good. So thank you guys for joining us today. We're uh, truly um, you know, thankful for you guys uh, to being here. Uh, Don, we just wanted to know, um, how have you and your staff been uh, during this time? And uh, how, what's your big, biggest challenge has been uh, during the pandemic? Um, I, I think it's just been uh, challenging from, um, you know, a, a staffing standpoint has been a little, um, you know, difficult to navigate through as, you know, a lot of the roles and responsibilities and um, different things, job routines that, you know, our staff was used to doing, everything kind of um, got uh, truncated, so to speak, and really um, turned upside down. So just kind of um, getting people used to, um, you know, doing things differently, not doing the full complement of services that we are, you know, accustomed to providing. And, um, you know, just trying to, um, you know, have staff um, be comfortable, I think, with being here. Um, that that was a little difficult in the beginning. Um, you know, getting used to the new procedures, like having to wear a face mask and, you know, making sure we were uh, diligent with hand washing and um, social distancing where we could. Um, but, you know, now that we've been at it for several weeks, I think, um, you know, there's there's a certain level of of comfort now, but in the beginning, it was um, it, it was difficult because things were changing on a daily basis. Yeah, awesome. um, yeah, that's awesome, Don. So, Don, I'm a big believer in, in nutrition, and it's a big part of health in our daily lives. I've seen some of your ideas um, that you implemented. Uh, can you uh, elaborate more on those recipes and drinks that you've uh, set up? Um, well, being that we, we had to scale down a lot on what we offered in retail, um, we wanted to still be able to do something um, nice for the staff that they would um, enjoy and, you know, would be a benefit to them, you know, health wise and also, you know, psychologically. Um, and John really came up with a lot of those recipes and um, that's really all. Um, John's wheelhouse in, in so, creating those great drinks. So John, tell me what, tell me your favorite one and how you make it. Well, we were trying to incorporate like immune boosting ideas since, you know, everybody's so concerned right now. So uh, one of the last ones that we did that went over really well was uh, a kale, uh, Granny Smith pear, uh, fresh garlic, fresh turmeric, uh, ginger and honey. Do you, happen, um, do you happen to know the ratios? That we could tell our, our viewers. Yeah, sure. So we're probably doing like eighty percent kale, you know, twenty percent juice of like the apple juice, uh, fresh apples, uh, fresh pears, and then the rest is just uh, you know garlic, ginger, and turmeric to taste. Cause you don't want it to be too overwhelming. And you just blend it in a blender. No, we're actually juicing it. So we have you know a couple different types of commercial. We have a the Robico commercial juicer, and then we also have the Impeller. The, the cold press system that we use for when we're doing wheatgrass and other type of grain, uh, greens and things like that. That's awesome. Chef, how are you making the uh, turmeric lattes? The turmeric lattes are made, we're using an almond milk, uh, coffee, and uh, just a little turmeric, and then we're keeping the sweeteners on the side just to keep it, to see if anyone wants to add it, because some people like to just have their coffee nice and strong. That's awesome. That's actually a really uh, great way to promote health and uh, you know boost immunity um, throughout the hospital and staff. And so that's uh, that was a really smart idea. Yeah, no, uh, staff seems to be pretty interested in it too. So we're selling out of both products pretty much every day. That's really awesome, Don. Um, can you explain some of the ways that you've uh, boosted morale throughout your department? I saw that you had uh, made some drawings. Uh, that were sent up on patient trays. How did, how did that come about? And can you uh, talk more about that? Um, so actually the, the staff that did those drawings on the um, disposable trays for us, those are 
um, staff from our wellness center and our um, rehabilitation uh, PT folks that were redeployed. Um, and they, their primary job was to, you know, we had a big shortage of um, PPE, so we didn't have um, disposable gowns. So those staff in particular um, were brought in on the overnights because we were um, laundering reusable gowns um, at our offsite wellness center. And then they would come back to the hospital like on the midnight shift, the gowns. So those staff were primarily responsible for um, sorting the new gowns and like, cause they would get all tangled up and everything. So they would have to take the new gowns, untangle them and fold them and put them in these bins so they could be, go back up to the units um, for the, you know, p for the nurses and the doctors who are take care taking care of the um, COVID patients. Um, but when they got caught up with our work, we the area where they were doing this was also a staging area that we used to assemble those cardboard um, trays because all of our meals had to go on isolation trays, so everything had to be disposable. So when this particular um, staff, overnight staff, when they had downtime, um, they decided to you know draw and write messages, um, get well messages for the patients, um, which was really nice. Um, and the patients, you know, we got a lot of um, good feedback on it. And it was just, you know, a really sweet gesture um, that they did. And uh, it really went a long way. Um, so I really have to commend that staff for taking that initiative to um, go ahead and, and make those for the patients. That is awesome. Because at the end of the yeah. day, sometimes the, the smallest gestures go the longest way. And, uh, you know, to have a little handwritten, uh, you know, coloring or a note is... Uh, is really a nice little touch. So that's kudos to you guys and your staff. Yeah, it's incredible how people come together in a time of need. So John, yeah. after this hurdle ends, where do you see the food and beverage industry going with, within the hospitals? And if you had one piece of advice for the industry, what would it be? Yeah. I think we just got to prepare for anything going forward. Uh, I think we now know that what we did know is not what we know anymore. So we've got to retrain our style of thinking for disaster and emergency plans. Uh, who would have thought that we would have had gone, you know, 90% isolation more or less overnight. I mean, it happened that quick and then paper supplies all over completely ran out. So we had to adapt to that. We also had to adapt to what we're doing now. I mean, we have disaster plans in place and menus in place. Uh, but so you, you hit the beginning where it happens and we plan for 30 days normally, but now we're going into two months, two plus months. So we got to really start thinking for the long haul now going forward. That's going to be a totally different way of thinking for us, especially in the way of storage. So how do you, how do you deal with this going forward? Oh, absolutely. Do you see like self-serving areas going to the wayside or them continue after this is over? I pray it continues, honestly, because the way, the way any kind of large retail setup is made is that you have self services is, is so ingrained to it and that's how we get people in and out of our eateries if it's all got to be self serve we got to redesign everything that we have um so we're, uh, hopefully that i'm hoping that we can get back to the days where we can still be self serve i think we're all definitely more self conscious of how we got to uh attack it uh and going forward hopefully it, it'll work out and my last thing for you have you adjusted your menu uh for packaging and stuff like that in this time I'm adjusting our menu like every every two days because number one products just aren't available. So you, you basically got to cook on the fly and what you got. Uh, and packaging, yeah, also what's going to hold. So a lot of things like when we were doing isolation trays is that, you know, one of the things that we, we took pride in was sending the meals up super hot at all times. We had a different pellet system that we also had heated plates. with. Now we're putting it in styrofoam with nothing. So we had a, we had a really think about what's going to hold and how it's still going to, you know, look and smell and, and, and work out once it hit the patient floors. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. And um, thanks for everything you do and say hi to the staff from me and Amir. And we look forward to seeing you when this is all over. Yes. Thank you guys again. And uh, echoing what Nick said, and we truly do appreciate you guys uh, jumping on the call with us today. Uh, thanks guys. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks for having us. Take care guys. Take care.